Hey, good morning. It is Lisa Leitner here with Don't IEP Alone. Welcome, welcome. I am in my home office, which is in my basement. So first of all, we are, I can't believe it is May already. It's May. I won't do the Justin Timberlake thing. I'm a little old for that. But anyway, it's May and I am crazy busy with clients, but I wanted to, you know, hop on, of course, and do one, ep- another episode. And let's see, what all do I want to cover? Here's what I want to cover. First of all, you know, I know some of you only have like three weeks of school left, which is crazy. Some, you know, I do know that some states stop or end school before Memorial Day. So we are heading to that, right? It's it's Memorial Day this year is the 27th. So some of you do only have a few weeks left. I want to strongly encourage you to consider my online training. I have to give a plug for this because I'm just, you know, I, I, I don't just, the reason, the whole reason I offer the training is I want to be able to reach as many people as I can most efficiently. And one-on-one advocacy is just not that efficient, right? It's not. And that's why, and that's why I do this. I know that doing online advocacy training is not the ideal way to spend a summer, but you can get the core content. You can really get that done in a weekend. So, I mean, you just never know, right? Like you might have a whole week this summer where, or weekend where it's completely rainy and there's nothing to do. So then you say, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to knock out this training this weekend because I'm just hearing from parents, just some, like, I've been doing this since 2010 and I just, I answer so many of the same questions over and over and over. And when I'm answering questions for clients, I end up basically giving an abbreviated version of, of my training, a very abbreviated version, but I'm, I'm telling you it works. It works. It works. It works. I have countless testimonials and emails from participants who say it works and summer is a great time to, like I said, get it knocked out and you can at least get the core stuff done and then you'll be ready for the school year and when, if or when problems arise next September you know, you're not frantically looking for like, oh, what do I do? What should I do next? You know, and then they come on the, the message boards and all those different things and ask these questions. So please, please consider it. Sorry, I have a loose hair here and I can't get it. If you're watching online, that's what I'm doing. I'm also wearing a Sixers shirt, go Sixers. And if you hear me say that, you'll know by the time this gets published, you'll know this, it, it may not age well, I guess is what I'm saying. When you say go Sixers and they have some big games coming up, it may not age well. I hope it does. The other thing I want to talk about, talk about as far as the podcast episode is about, and I'm, I'm kind of not even sure how to word this because I spend a lot of time telling parents <laughs> that you really, really, really need to engage in the IEP process, that these problems do not resolve on their own. Things do not mysteriously get better. You know, I've seen this cycle happen with literally thousands of parents, and that is you go to your annual IEP meeting or and or you end the school year on on kind of like a tense note. It might be a negative note. It might be, you know, lack of progress. It might be even regression. Um, it might be a lot of behaviors at the end of the school year. It might be a, a bad IEP meeting at the end of the school year where you did not get what you had hoped to get on your IEP for your child. But for whatever reason, like there's this negative energy in the air, right? Like you're not feeling right about your IEP. I've seen this happen, like I said, thousands of times. So the parent goes home or, you know what I mean? Like you're driving in your car, you're walking your dog and you're thinking about all this stuff about what's going on. Maybe you send a couple of emails. Maybe you come on the message boards and ask your questions about this. Maybe you even call and get a consult from an advocate or do some reading online, right? Like that sense of urgency because it's the end of the school year or you want to get it resolved before school ends and stuff like that. It happens. Then you know, they answer your email, things happen or they don't. And we all know that like then this kind of sense of urgency, it just fades away, right? Like it was a terrible situation, but then 
we all know that's how life is. Time passes and we've learned kind of ways to cope or deal with it. And so, like I said, the sense of urgency passes and people don't, you know, that's it. Like, and then all of a sudden it's summer and then you're like, ah, well, we'll just see what happens next year. That is why I'm like begging you to, if you don't take my training, take some training because that's, I mean, these things don't resolve on their own. So I spend a lot of time like begging parents to please get more engaged in the process. The flip side of that is, is I want to encourage some of you who I've heard from the message boards, the the Facebook page, email. I want to encourage some of you to reevaluate your vigilance. And what I mean by that is what are you being vigilant about when it comes to your child in the IEP? Because I'm hearing from some parents and it's like, oh, well, now I have this problem. Oh, now I have this problem. Oh, now I have this problem. And it's like week after week after week, the parent is finding something wrong with the IEP, something wrong with the school, something bad with the IEP team. And what it comes down to is that a lot of it is just stuff that really doesn't matter. In my training, I talk a lot about, I give you a lighthouse to focus on and keep your eye on that lighthouse. And in the big picture of things, does it really matter? And I know I've said this a zillion times in writing and I think on the podcast as well, is that my friend, Michelle, who's an advocate, used to be, I don't think she still is. She once said that when she was first starting this whole stuff with her daughter, and her daughter had, trust me, her daughter had a lot, a lot, a lot of problems at school. Like her daughter, like literally almost drowned in the school pool, like because of the school's negligence. Like it was that bad. But that was later on. But early on in, in her advocacy career, she said, and she said this later, that when I didn't know what to focus on, I found myself focusing on little things that just didn't matter. And I'm seeing that from a lot of parents right now is just focusing on, again, a lot of little stuff that just doesn't matter. Now, that doesn't mean that I'm letting the school off the hook for their responsibilities. They are responsible to provide FAPE. They are responsible, you know, for a lot of things and implementing the IEP and all that. So I'm not letting anybody off the hook for their responsibilities. But Sometimes you just need to document the situations and use that information later. Just document it so that you have it when you need it. If they're not doing this and they're not doing that, again, document it. Keep that information for it later if you need it. But you don't have to kind of chase down every single detail with flaws, with you know every little thing with your IEP and IEP team. When I first started working for an agency here in my county, and I had a really good mentor who taught me a lot, but I remember that, that a practice that she showed me, and it's, it's a practice that I still use in, in my training today, and it's a practice that I still use with my clients, and that is she wouldn't let us, like, <laughs> so she would, <laughs> it was funny, she would kind of shrug, and she'd go, well, time for a letter. And again, writing that letter that, that she was talking about is the core of my training because you put it all in one big, like you handle it all at once. You don't send an email today about this and an email tomorrow about that and then an email next Tuesday about something else, right? That is not going to bode well for you when, as the situation progresses, it's not going to bode well for you And if, if you're sending emails every couple of days. When you make everything important, nothing is, right? When you make everything important, nothing is important, right? So you want to focus on getting those important, important issues handled and then come in and kind of clean up the details as needed. But I feel like so many parents out there, they just they know things aren't going well. And I, I feel like trying to kind of fill a bucket with like, well, if I come up with this complaint and this complaint and this issue and this complaint, and they're not doing this and they're not doing that, that if you 
have this whole bucket of things that the school needs to be doing that that will that will like help resolve the issue and it might but what i'm saying is i would present them with the entire bucket at once not a drop here a drop there a drop there a drop there and having this like little stuff just drag on forever so if you are emailing your school multiple times a month over stuff like this and definitely you know if it's multiple times a week like take a step back and really reread those emails that you've sent to the school was it really necessary to do that or could you compile them you know compile them all now if you have the data and documentation, and again, in my training, I teach you what is data and documentation and how to gather it and how to make it count, but that data and documentation and present it all at once. And you can, you know, like, look, the school year ended, the school year did not end on a positive note. I want to make sure that he's successful next fall. So I want to get these details hammered out now. Of course, teachers are not required to work in the summer. In most cases, they're not required to respond to you, but you can at least get it off your plate. In my experience, most administrators do work over the summer. Those are usually year-round positions. So you can still always contact a special ed director, pupil services, you know, whatever, whatever the case, you know, whatever your school calls it, get things handled. And there are going to be ESY teachers, right? So there's going to be a special ed teacher of some kind there that you can kind of get some of this handled, even if it's not your child's special ed teacher. So it's too much. It's too much for you. Like give yourself permission to take a break and take a step back and look at that big picture right? When you get too hyper-focused on things like, I'm thinking of like a cartoon drawing or an animated drawing of Elmer Fudd, and now I'm dating myself. Elmer Fudd, like when he walking bent over with a magnifying glass, right? When you're, when you're going through life and your IEP like that, you're not seeing the big picture. You're merely magnifying what's right in front of you and making it look bigger than it is. So again, put the magnifying glass down and take a step back and say, okay, what is in front of me? What do I really need to handle right now? Okay, I'm going to keep it a little short today. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. Really kind of plan out your summer about what you're going to do. Don't be so vigilant. At the same time, like it's kind of like planned vigilance. Like don't I can't recommend to parents that you just like toss the IEP aside from Memorial Day to Labor Day and don't even think about it. I get it. I get wanting to do that, but I would plan out what you're going to do this summer as far as your IEP if things are not going well for your child, okay, and and get it, get it sorted out and have a plan of attack, kind of end this school year and get the, get the new one started. So again, visit adayinourshoes.com. If you have any other questions or want to read more articles, you can visit forums.adayinourshoes.com to ask your questions. Every question is answered by a professional advocate. And then, of course, adayinourshoes.org is the page that will give you information about the podcast, all of the training that I offer, the IEP toolkit, and all that other fun stuff. So have a great weekend.